Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood, make us alive in the Spirit, to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood, you saved the chosen. And in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, 
and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In high school, I was not big enough to play on the football team. I was not tall enough to play on the basketball team, and I was not fast enough to be on the track team. Because of the consistent preaching of my pastor and the teaching of my Sunday school years, I was always aware that I was far from perfect even on God's scale of perfection. At the beginning of every Sunday's liturgy, I confessed that I had sinned against God in thought, word, and deed. Each Sunday's confession reminded me of all the ways in which my sinning had won the day. Jesus struggled with temptations even more significant than the temptations with which I struggle. However, Jesus had the advantage of knowing that he was God's beloved Son. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The haunting fear of my youth was that whether God is pleased with me or not, whether God thinks of me as beloved is dependent upon how perfectly I have resisted all temptations to sin. You and I can easily fool ourselves into thinking that we would not struggle with temptations to sin if we were only perfect. In Mark's account of Jesus' baptism and receiving God's Holy Spirit, however, Jesus immediately is tempted to sin. A voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. The good news is not, if you resist temptations to sin better than most others, then you will be God's beloved daughter or son. When we judge one another against what we assume are God's expectations of perfection, and when we judge one another against our expectations of perfection in one another, we turn God's good news into bad news. We turn the good news of God's gift of forgiveness into the bad news of God's love that in our persistent sinfulness we shall never earn. 
God did not declare Jesus to be God's beloved son with whom God was pleased because Jesus had passed the test of perfection. Instead, Jesus struggled with temptations to sin, knowing that he was God's beloved son with whom God was well pleased. In the sacrament of holy baptism, God claimed you and me as beloved sons and daughters. In the gift of forgiveness promised in holy baptism, not only are you and I beloved sons and daughters of God, but also God is well pleased with you and me. It is as beloved children of God that you and I struggle with temptations to sin. God's gifts and promises of holy baptism are not dependent upon how close you and I can come to being perfectly sinless. We struggle against temptations to sin, not to be loved by God, but we struggle against temptations to sin because God loves us. God made a covenant with Noah and his family. God would never forget God's promise to save us sinners from the penalty of our sins. Your hope and mine for perfection are not found within ourselves. The first letter of Peter reminds us of Jesus' commitment to sinners. Jesus' commitment even to sinners such as you and I. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. Your sins and mine, your lack of perfection and mine, your temptations to sin and mine, do not change God's claim of us as beloved children. In my wife's 52 years of loving me, if her loving were dependent upon how perfectly I loved her, my marriage would have never lasted much past the first hundred arguments and disagreements. I offer Linda the gift of my love, not for fear of living up to her expectations. I love Linda because I know that I am undeservedly loved. If your daughter awakes each day wondering if she can measure up to your expectations of perfection, not only will she live in fear, but also she may struggle to love you. If your friends at school are only your friends, as long as you can come reasonably close to being the friend they expect you to be, then they are not true friends at all. True love is always a gift. In Jesus, we receive God's love before we defeat the temptations of the day. God envelops us in a persistent, forgiving love even when our quest for perfection fails us. 
Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe in the good news. You are a beloved, baptized child of God. God is pleased with you and me, even when we fail God, even when we fail one another. God baptized you and me to share God's gift of good news with other sinners who have failed God to share God's gift of good news with other sinners who have failed you and to share God's gift of good news with other sinners who have failed themselves. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees 
crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Faithful God, you walk beside us in this Lenten journey, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you.